Welcome to the Lipis Report. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Lipis Report video podcast. I'm joined with Lillian Kwan, who is a technical marketing engineer at Cisco Systems. Lillian, say hello. Hey. Hello, Nick. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Excellent. Great. I'm so glad that you're here because we're going to dive into, like, the Nexus 9000 programming environment. In the previous podcast, we went over the overall architecture and the features and the ways and means in which you can now program this Nexus 9000. Now we're going to actually demo it. We're actually going to show you how you can actually use all of this technology uh, for benefit. How we're going to focus right now is going to be on the part of like how uh, all the programming environment can aid network engineers with troubleshooting and with um, monitoring their networks and also how applications can now access and dive into all this new data that is available on the Nexus 9000 platform. And to aid us in that, uh, is Lillian. So, okay, so the first place I'm going to take you to, of course, we, we're going to start with the traditional CLI. Okay, So Excellent. Yeah, this is my switch. Okay, so if you are a network engineer who's familiar with Nexus OS, then you're going to find the command line here on our oh. switch is just so familiar or yeah. almost identical as what you see um, on any other Nexus OS platform. But the fact is, it is the same because we do we are running Nexus OS on our Nexus 9000 uh, product line. Um, in fact, we actually made a few in enhancements. So we call that enhanced Nexus OS. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, when you're running network um, devices, you always want to monitor the system's resource utilization. Yeah. So, uh, this command you know, it has been there in the traditional um, Nexus OS. So we keep it, so this command basically monitors the system resource utilization. For example, oh, you can go. see CPU utilization yes. or memory usage. It gives you the total memory size and the current used si memory size or what's available for yeah. now. Um, one thing new, is we actually also provide the capability to monitor buffer utilization. Very good. Yeah. So uh, is that on a system-wide or a module level? And or both? It, both, because on system-wise, system so basically the system has multiple buffer pools mm -hmm. or like multiple components has buffers. So we provide buffer visibilities on all the components, including line cards, including fabric modules. Awesome. Very so good. for example, I'm going to show you buffer utilization on my line card in slot, uh, in slot four. One thing I love about NextOS and, and also iOS is a question mark. Uh, so you don't yeah. have to memorize <laughs> the exact command. So basically, with this command, you show the entire um, buffer utilization for the entire system, right? Every component which has buffer. Um, yeah. So this is really good. Like if you're uh, if you're seeing congestion build up and you want to find out what's happening with the buffer depth, like within the switch or within a module. Absolutely. Yeah. So now, um, after the system view, then you can zoom into any modules. For example, yeah. I now I'm looking at buffer utilization on my module four. Mm -hmm. Um, and also you can, so here you can see uh, for every buffer pools, right? So what are the remaining buffers? What are the uh, available total buffer sizes? Um, if you want to see details, you can basically just use the keyword detail. Uh -huh. Then you can see on every single port for every queue or buffer uh, pools. You can awesome. see with the instantaneously how many buffer cells have been, are in use. So now I don't have active traffic flows, so all the counters are zero. But when I have uh, real traffic going on, when there's a transient congestion, so you're going to see some numbers are going to be moving. Okay. Yep. So this is showing uh, every port into the ASICs, and it's going to break down unicast, multicast, and four different queues, and also the CPU utilization, even what's happening on the span port. You got it. Wow. That's right. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great detail. Um, next thing I want to show you is basically we provide 
additional access to uh, our systems to, for in to capture information or for monitoring. For example, now we allow users to access Linux Bash. Very good. And also yep. we open up the Broadcom uh, Bash so that people can really dive into the chip level to awesome. look at counters, t statistics, routing table information. Great. So let's say, first we go to Bash. Okay. So this is really like the Linux kernel on running under underneath the Nexus OS. Okay. So once you're in Bash, so you become from networking admin, you now you can be the system admin. Yeah. So for anybody who are coming from the Linux background, familiar with Linux um, command line, then they can use everything they are familiar oh. with, they know. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. So basically just, it looks like any version of Linux. Uh, so it gives you the route, you know, the routes and um, the queues and the uh, registers and so forth. That's Yeah, and also it shows all the management interfaces, oh, right? Look at that. In, yeah. Even including the internal um, out-of-band communication uh, interfaces for components to talk to components. For, uh -huh. for example, my LAN card, talk to my supervisor, are going through this interface and this interface. Um, so really, this is actually provide additional visibility into the control plane of the switch. Wow, yeah, great, excellent. Okay, so next thing. And now, chip level, SDK. Chip level, right. yes, yep. going to uh, uh, Broadcom shell. Yeah. So to do that, we need to go to the individual modules first. So for example, my, I want to go to my line card module four. Okay. So here, I'm on line card module four. Okay. And then now I want to get into the Broadcom shell. First, I get into the debug mode. And then second, I'm going to get into the shell. All right, so we're there. Wow, um, great. You have a whole well, set of commands to, to monitor the counters, and wow. information table insert you know right. as well mm -hmm. so one command now i love to do is to look at uh, the forwarding table yeah so this is my basically my layer 2 mac table uh huh very good right so this is a line card if once we can also go to fab fabric module because fabric module now has also have a sick chip yep. and so that as a user you can also go to the fabric module which is actually very new idea and yep. just like how we attach to a line card module we can actually attach, attach to the fabric, the fabric. yeah wow. all right so now we're on the fabric module itself um again Go get into the debug mode. Yeah. Debug, if I <laughs> can type. Okay. Okay, here it also has, you know, the same set of uh, Broadcom um, yeah. command. So here actually we can do more and we can see more routing table information. Okay. And even like from right. these commands, you can even you can mim manipulate the routing table. There's also TCAM access, access into the TCAM, and see what's happening in the TCAM as well. Right. Okay. Yep. Wow, that's that's great. That's that is a level of detail never available before. Yeah, in we're, the industry. Yeah, we're just further the visibility what user can get. Yeah. So first, so from the command line, now you can go to Linux, Linux Bash. Now you can go to Broadcom Bash on the chip level. Yeah. Lillian, that is just a huge amount of information that is now accessible and exposed to both DevOps and also network engineers. Um, but let's look at how this gets automated, and especially with the API, Nexus API. Absolutely. Yeah, so we're very excited about um, the new API, the web-based API we actually introduced on our platforms, because that's going to enable programmers, that, like, especially now, you know, the new generation of application developers, they all love to use web interface yeah. to talk to the machines. So let's see. So this is, you know, a standard web browser. And to access our Nexus 9000 switches, you just need to open the web browser and then tap into the IP address. And then you're nice. here, right? So um, let's 
take a closer look here. So what we yeah. can do, we can do uh, in multiple different modes, like we can do CLI show commands, uh -huh. and we can do configuration. Config. So yeah, yeah if, if you, you're one person who likes to pre-script your configuration, mm -hmm. and then um, send it over to the switch, you can do it here. You can just copy, paste, and then send it to the switch Excellent. through the web interface. Of course, it's not like it. It doesn't mean you have to do it through here. You can still do, um, you know, the configuration posting in whichever way, whichever way you used to do. But this is a new method. Yeah, that's uh, great. So efficient. you yeah. yeah, very efficient. So great. You you create the configuration, especially if you have to load in like fifty switches or so. One way to do it, okay, you do the script, you put it in here, and you send it off. Yeah, so this yeah. is a window for basically for you to try out the command, and also you can do like one-time uh, deployment. But if say, you, you made a good point, if you need to deploy the configuration or commands to multiple, like 100 devices, mm -hmm. you probably want to write a, a small script yeah. to do that. And the script will make it a, a, a RPC call to talk to the switches, 100 hundreds of switches through their web interface, and then to push the commands or configuration down, down to awesome. the switches. And the mm -hmm. difference is from using the traditional CLI, you do the same thing through scripting, or using the web interface, web API, is that the return, uh, return data here through the web interface, yeah. it's structured. Awesome. So it's gonna mm -hmm. be much easier for machine to read. So think about CLI is basically for us our, uh, for us human to read, mm -hmm. but for um, applications, for other machines, it's not very friendly. For them, they have to do screen scraping and to get the inf data they need. But here, through the web interface, the return data is nicely formatted either in XML or in JSON. Yeah, very Depen good. Yeah, depends on your programming uh, choice, then this is gonna be very easy for a machine, for a program to read. So this right. is like, so this is the, uh, the XML script for um, show version, um, right. you know, for a Nexus 9000. So right. you can now take this, cut and paste it um, into, um, you know, would it be Python or some other application? And then you can actually, you know, run that script. Yeah, so so basically, if they think for any Linux um, scripter or programmers, it's their choice, right? Off the box, mm. they can use Python, they can use um, uh, Linux Shell, or they can use any other scripting tools they want. Awesome. Yeah. Very as good. long as they, the tool can basically digest this nicely formatted XML data or JSON data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're Great. Good. Um, so let me show you. So this is XML, and JSON is actually my favorite data, sh data format now. Because it's, I call it this is oh. friendly for both human and machine. Yeah. Because it's much easier for me to read compared to XML data. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, you're right. That's really easy to read. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. And another thing is, instead of uh, accessing to the switch Nexus OS itself, through here, through this web API, we can also access the Linux bash. Very Remember good. Remember yep. I showed you from command line how you can do bash commands? Here, the same thing. Once you change the mode to bash, you can directly talk to the Linux bash through the web API. Just change the mode to bash, yep. and then change the uh, output format to XML, and then you can do your Linux command. Okay. Right? Wow. And that's basically all the counters and um, that are running in the, yeah, all the processes, the processes in the, it, yeah. running in the Linux kernel. Mm -hmm. Great, awesome, look at that. That's great. Okay. okay, so, wonderful. A lot of data, access it through CLI, access it through the API. The API also now gives us XML and JSON um, scripts. How can we now take that, use it to automate? Okay, great, great question. Actually, we, uh, in order to show that, uh, we developed two simple demos. So remember now, as you said, now we provide a lot of open access to the box, a yeah. lot of data, and we provide for like flexible ways to get the data off the box. So how can we use those together to automate the way to monitor the box, to manage the box, yeah. and to provision the box? So here, the first uh, example, or GUI example I want to show is the Splunk. So 
Splunk, uh, a lot of enterprise customers or commercial customers using it as a way to um, monitor their networking, mm -hmm. their networks. So we just took, make this a simple example, make a Splunk on the back end, use a uh, Nexus API wrapper uh -huh. and make an RPC call to talk to the switches through the web API and then collect the data. So here in my example, it collects the buffer utilization. Remember on the CLI, I show you with the, with the command how we can see the buffer utilization, um, yep. like how many cells has been buffered, how many, um, how, mu how much buffer is still available. So right. those statistics. Now through the uh, web API and using the same um, command, we can collect the data. We can actually pro use this programmatic tool to like collect the data and also to graph it. Yeah, mm -hmm. excellent, very good. So, so we basically have Splunk, um, we have kind of a, a back-end uh, access to the Nexus API through an RPC. Um, it basically um, runs that CLI command you know, for us, right. um, and then it pulls uh, all of the buffer information. So we're showing yes. here um, maximum amount of buffer availability over time, and right, right now there's no traffic going through. Yeah, again, so. there's no traffic going through, so all my buffer cells are available which is a good thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> and on the back end, so the return traffic now, it's a structured XML. Actually, now we're on the back end, yeah, structured XML data. So it's really this machine-to-machine -machine communication through Nexus the API is way more efficient than the older way to do that. Oh, for sure. That's uh, great. Yeah. And you get the graphical representation in real time, and that's, Lillian, that is really just great. Um, but how do we uh, now kind of take all this information, aggregate it, um, and can we now look at multiple different things at the same time? Good question. So for that, actually, I think I read your mind beforehand. So <laughs> we prepared this, um, another, uh, another demo. So it's a very simplified example of a NOS uh, dashboard. So uh -huh. we call it NCME TME dashboard. Okay. So this is typically, you know, what's NOS, uh, the people in NOS will look at, right? So basically look at the dashboard, the monitor, CPU utilization or the buffer utilization or traffic load or maybe the power, power level yeah. conditions. So we actually gr um, create this demo to capture those informations from our switch. Um, and then we use this very simple graphing tool called uh, Graphi to, to create a separate, separate window and separate graphs to show the uh, information yeah. to show the data. So on the back end, actually this this server is really busy to talk to our switches through making the RPC calls yeah. to um, collecting, requesting th those data and to processing the returned XML data. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. So in if you compare this to you know traditional um, monitoring tools using SNM, SNMP or maybe using a traditional way to access CLI, this is a way more um, efficient. I think it's efficient and flexible too because like a lot of those uh, kind of knock dashboards, they're already kind of pre-programmed. So there's very little flexibility in terms of like the things that you may want to be able to look at, you may not have access to. Now there's so much more access. So there's CPU, there's like forwarding counts, there's memory, there's even the power consumption on right. the 40 gigabit optics, you know, that you can that you can look at. And so all this starts with, you look at the Nexus API, you put out a command, you get script, you know, or yeah. you get you get code, you get structured code, and now you can basically use that within Graphite here um, to, to start looking at any little dimension that you want to look at on the 9000, that is important to you and your operations. Yeah, and, and remember, this is created by us, TME. We're not by far no, not um, DevOps team mm -hmm. or, you know, but we can do this. Imagine with a, a team of uh, people who are very skillful programmers, um, they can do a lot of more. Oh my, yeah, and we're looking at one switch. You could be looking at an entire network, uh, you know, as well. So there's lots that you can do here and it's really just bounded by imagination and really what's driving your business. Yes. Great, excellent. Lillian, thank you so very much. That was, that was great, fantastic. And also congratulations uh, to you and the whole engineering team. That is like really uh, impressive demo. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent, great. Well, we've been talking about the new Cisco Nexus programming environment with Lillian Kwan, who is technical marketing engineer at Cisco Systems. And I'd like to thank you all so very much for watching. Thank you. That concludes this edition of the Lipis Report. Thank you for joining us. Look for us every Tuesday and Thursday. 
To get your free subscription to the Lipis Report newsletter, go to www.lipisreport.com. To sponsor the Lipis Report podcast, send email to sales at lipis.com. We've got to go, and so do you. See you next time.